What I've noticed over the last couple weeks, and you guys have seen it, is there's been a massive shift towards uh, attention, right? And as we know and we talk, where attention goes, money flows. So wherever is the hot attention, wherever is the moment that is capturing the scenes of the internet, that's where you need to be paying attention. In the year 2019, BlackRock proceeded to hire a former Ripple XRP executive to spearhead their entire development of their cryptocurrency department. In the year 2015, uh, you probably know this asset manager, Fidelity, they began mining Bitcoin in the year 2015. Over the next 30 days, something is going to be taking place uh, in the next 30, 60, 90 days that I think is important for a lot of people to understand. And what I want to do is give you guys some context so that you can prepare yourself effectively and efficiently for where the world is headed. Now, before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of a story. It was the year 2020 and I was in the exact city where I am today, which is Miami. The year is 2020. Now, right before that, I was in the same place that I was in 2020, which was in Mexico. So I went to the same neighborhood that I was in prior to the last bull run, uh, prior to the last kind of presidential run in the United States, which we know has a massive effect on the markets. And finally, uh, I came back to Miami where, where we began to develop the entire thesis of NFTs, the entire thesis of Web3, the entire thesis of uh, cryptocurrency as a dominant form of money movement and the introduction of DeFi. Now, it's interesting because the last time I was in Miami, uh, I had 17x my net worth. It was crazy. It was the first time I had experienced a massive increase due to the fact that I was extremely allocated in crypto. Now, as you guys know, I exited my Ethereum positions at $3,950, and then I exited uh, my Bitcoin in the high 40s, low 50s, kind of trickled my way out of there. And I rotated to what I believe to be a phenomenal opportunity prior to crypto when it came to be true, which was the stock market. We talked about Meta uh, a year ago. We talked about Microsoft, which was basically now the proxy owner of Ch of. OpenAI slash ChatGPT in that entire ecosystem. We talked about Shopify, uh, and we talked about now a lag lagging indicator, but a future giant PayPal, amongst a couple other plays such as Coinbase. Uh, and now one that is eyeing my portfolio, which is uh, Robinhood. As you guys know, Robinhood stock uh, to me, it's extremely cheap. It's undervalued. And the newbies love trading on that platform, especially now since it's 24 seven. So potentially look at that. There may be an opportunity for you there. Now, during the last bull run, the narrative was, uh, the killers of Ethereum, right? And you had that narrative take place, which was, Hey, Solana came around, but it was, it was kind of led in some way, shape or form or connected with Sam Bankman Freed. So that entire ecosystem suffered uh, in some way, shape or form for the very simple fact that it was associated with a crook. Now, what I've come to realize about these alternating L1s, you have Avalanche, you have Solano, 
In the last bull run, you had the Binance Smart Chain, which was led by the BNB run and the BNB fever and the craze of shit coins. A lot of that has now died down on BNB due to the fact that BUSD is being taken down. And we are seeing the resurfacing of uh, speculative markets that hasn't been around for a couple of years. Now, the reason I wanted to talk to you guys first is you need to understand positioning Two, you need to understand sources of information. And then three, let me hide this chat real quick. Give me a second. I don't know what this hide chat request is, but let me just uh, turn off comments so we can chop it up. Okay. So let's talk. Uh, last bull run, the narrative, guys, was DeFi, uh, Ethereum killers, NFTs. Well, shit coins have been kind of a thing always in crypto. But what you need to be figuring out is what are the narratives today? Now, what you need to do in order to understand narratives is you need to understand the market. Who is the person that is trading this market? Now, I can tell you it's not the 60-year-old guy on their computer that works a 9-to-5 job. I can tell you it's quite often not the 50-year-old dad, right, father of two. It's usually people in their 20s, their 30s, their early 40s uh, that have a higher risk tolerance. Now, the reason they have a higher risk tolerance is because the market itself is extremely risky. You see 100% gains, but then you see fucking rugs at a thousand percent rate that you see any sort of winning. So it's, it's a crazy market. Now, the reason I'm coming to you guys is because I think you guys need to take really seriously the opportunity that you have at hand over the next coming years. I would say two to three years, maybe a little bit longer if, um, if Donald Trump becomes president again, you might have a little bit better of a market the rates will go down for sure if he wins and we will be printing more money. But there is an event taking place, which is the Bitcoin ETF. And then later on in 2024, the Bitcoin halving. And then later on in the year, the Bitcoin conference. And then later on in the year, the bond issuance of the Bitcoin volcano mining operation in El Salvador which I recommend if you're a Bitcoin or crypto multimillionaire that you be paying attention to other jurisdictions that are uh, supporting the development of this ecosystem. Now, I want to introduce to you guys the concept of money as not the concept of value, but the concept of the advancement of technology. Now, over the next coming months, I will be publishing uh, something important with regards to the crypto markets uh, for you guys that I've been working on for quite a long time now. And the thesis behind this entire ecosystem that is financial remittance and the transfer of value is understanding that money is not value, but it is technological remittance of commerce. Now, let me explain. A thousand years ago, if I wanted to, not a thousand years ago, but maybe a little bit longer, 4,000 years ago, if I wanted to transact with you, and let's say you had a plot of land, I would come to you with something that was valuable to you and we would barter and negotiate. But let's say I had 10 different plots of land, each of them a kilometer away from each other, and every individual that wanted to buy that plot of land had a different bartering system, AKA they perceived or wanted a trade-off that was different than the prior individual before. So plot of land one was sold to a guy that did a trade-off on cows and uh, plot of land number two was a trade-off that was done uh, in, in salt. And then plot number three was done in Indian spices. And then plot number four was done in uh, mirrors or pearls. So you had all these exchanges of value that the other person deemed important. 
Now, there was a financial technological revolution that took place, which was the issuance of the mint, the issuance of the coin, because, because the coin standardized, right, the, the process of understanding value. Because what I could do, in essence, was, okay, this plot of land is worth the issuance of these coins, this mint. The money, guys, was a technological advancement of what? The remittance of value. But as money grew, right, people also began to do what? Dilute the money. Because they realized that by diluting the money, you could increase the supply and kind of lie to the people regarding uh, the actual weight and value of your money. Because remember, the issuance of that money was weighed. So it, the size, the dimension was measured by weight. So you would have uh, your measurement in silver, you would have your measurement in copper, you would have your measurement in gold, whatever it may be, X, Y, and Z. Now, what is interesting is that it wasn't only a technological advancement for commerce, but it was also a technological advancement, hear me clearly, for the issuance of perceived dominance and power. Why? Because every time you would see Caesar's face on the coin, you knew who you belonged to. You knew whose ecosystem, right, you were under. So, so the coin became a symbol of power. The person that could issue coin, right, the person that could mint money was the person in charge. So clever individuals came along and said, let's create a system that allows us to have this power without really having the assets to back this power, AKA fiat currency. Now, as you guys understand, fiat currency is not something new. It's existed for hundreds of years, but it's basically the building of society upon credits and loans. Because when you go and deposit your money inside of the bank account, the bank does not see that money as a deposit. They don't see it as an asset that they're holding on your behalf. They see it as what? A liability. Why? Because, well, they're giving you interest on it. Therefore, it's what? It's, it's, it's kind of like an investment vehicle. You know, you're going to make your money back but they give you 0.1, 0.01%. But now it's very clever. You are holding a liability on your balance sheet. So the money that's issued from there, the loans that are created, because a loan is created upon the signing, right? Because once you sign, the money is created. The loan is created upon your signature. People assume that money is just sitting there, right? But it's you signing upon the creation of the loan that issues the money into existence. But once that money comes into existence, how do you bring it back? You can't. That's why it expands, what? To more reliable things once society begins to realize that that money is being forged. So what happened with the Roman Empire? Well, Julius Caesar decided that he wanted to go back onto the gold standard. Julius Caesar decided that he wanted to get rid of the usury or the concept of debt because he realized that there was individuals, oligarchs, that were monetizing off of the fractionalization of the currency. But look, how was it that these individuals fr fractionalized the currency back in the day? Well, they would dilute the purity of the coin. Now, back in the day, you would basically have to go and mine for gold or take over a village or take over a kingdom in order to bring in new currency in order to grow. Today, expansion or growth is merely just the printing of fake money. But that's basically stealing from your own people because you're debasing, devaluing the purchasing power that you have. Why? Because there's more circulating supply. Therefore, scarcity becomes less abounding. We don't know how many dollars there are in circulation. When, when I go to, to a Walmart, I could go with a $20 bill that is fake and it would, and it would clear. 100, unless it was terrible, it would 99% of the time clear. 
So how many fake dollars are there in circulation around the planet? And we need to remember the big fraud is thinking that $1 equals $1. Because in your short lifespan, you have noticed that the value of $1 has gone down. But how low has it gone down in its purchasing power and in its value since the issuance of the dollar? It's gone down 99%. And if you're holding a different currency, let's say the Singaporean dollar, the Swiss franc, those are the two probably that could be exempt, but you're holding any other currency against the dollar, you're getting absolutely fucking blasted, except one. Bitcoin. And it's crazy to, to think about it, but when you begin to think about Bitcoin as merely the, evo the technological evolution of money and the transparency of the fact that there won't be more issued later, that there's a limited finite supply at an intrinsic level makes you, un makes you want to hold that thing more than the unlimited amounts of fiat that could be in existence and are constantly being printed without your permission. It's fucked. Like imagine you own Bitcoin, right? And all of a sudden new Bitcoin appears. Like what the fuck? What would Bitcoin would literally fucking go to zero. It loses all trust and value. Why? Because it no longer holds the promise that it has. If you look at the US Constitution, the amount of US dollars that are supposed to be in circulation is 300 million. The US Constitution has issued 300 million dollars of circulating supply. Everything else is not real. Now, back to Julius Caesar. He wanted to reintroduce the gold standard because he saw the debasing of the currency, a.k.a. the fading of his empire. But the oligarchs didn't like it. After he passed the law, within six months, he was murdered. 23 stabs. A couple years later, the debasing of the currency was reintroduced. Now, this happened again many years later in a different land with an individual known as Abraham Lincoln. Now, Abraham Lincoln was an interesting individual because he introduced the thesis of freedom and freedom for everybody. Now, he also understood that in order to win, he would need to fight for people that were opposing that view. Now, obviously, if you go deep down the rabbit hole, you understand that that war was funded, right? Somebody has to pay the soldiers. The soldiers have to get paid. But if you study history, a very famous and well-off banking dynasty approached Abraham Lincoln and offered to finance his side of the war, his side of the civil war for a massive interest rate of over 10%. Abraham Lincoln said, fuck that. He went to issue what he called the greenback dollars. And the greenback dollars was currency that he issued so that he could pay the army. He'd used the governmental power to do what? to get rid of the central banking system that was basically in control of the entire game. Within six months, he was murdered. This happened again in history, many years later. As the United States approached the war on communism across the, across the world, from Vietnam to the Koreas, to the South Americas, the, the war on communism was rampant, Cuba, USSR, and so forth. There was an individual known as Kennedy. You've probably heard of this guy. You've probably heard of this individual, right? 
Now, Kennedy was a very interesting individual because he came in as a Democrat, but at some point he shifted his perspective into understanding that there was a big issue with the currency being debased. So he issued through the treasury $2 billion of a new currency, a new US dollar that was backed by silver, the silver backed dollar. Within six months, he was murdered. And a few months later, a silver coin with his face on it was minted to commemorate him. There was another individual in history, a little bit more on the ruthless side. In the northern region of Africa, his name was Gaddafi. Now, you've heard Hillary Clinton brag about, I, we came, we saw, he died. But the reason was because when it's all said and done, Gaddafi wanted to introduce the Pan-African currency backed by gold. Within a few years, he was dead. A few years later, an anonymous individual approached the internet, known as Satoshi Nakamoto. He introduced this concept of a new currency that was backed by trust, that was backed by truth, transparency, and the power of the network. Unlike any other individual that I listed prior that attempted to build something that would compete with the loyal dependence of the dollar, was introduced for the first time. And it kind of stuck. And it kind of became cool. And it represented freedom. But there's nobody to murder. There's no single source of leadership, right, that can be directly killed that can kill this thing in perpetuity. Yeah, it can kill the price. Yeah, you can get rid of, rid of F2 pool and you, can, and you can do some crazy shit. Yeah, for sure. But one Bitcoin is still one Bitcoin. And what has been reintroduced is what has always existed throughout history, which is a world where multi-currencies exist. Before you had central banks, you had state banks or you had local banks and those banks issued notes. In fact, you can still go to uh, Hong Kong, for example, and they will issue you notes that are bank deposits that work like money, but they're merely a representation of what you hold in your bank. That is, that is what, that, what it is. So as your money's worth fucking zero, and I've just explained it to you, as there is a massive move towards digital IDs, a massive move towards the centralization and control of every aspect of your reality, from what you eat, to what you say, to what you think, to what you see, to who you hang out with, to what you put in your body, to what you have to listen to, everything is controlled. How do you get out of that? you have to be operating outside of certain systems, which means you have to develop different belief systems, which means you have to get educated as to the system that you're in. Because many of you guys, for example, don't know, there's a big conflict right now in the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal accounts for one of the massive uh, decreases in product cost because of the expedited delivery and the shortness of the trip to take goods from the east to Europe and to the west. 
But since there's an issue there now, all the ships now have to be redirected down through South Africa. Every ship now has to take on 3,300 additional nautical miles. You may not feel it today, but in six months, my friend, the prices will go up. Inflation, distress, conflict is a lagging indicator in finance. So when I tell individuals that thousands of dollars a day is not a lot of money, <laughs> it's because you need to understand that, okay, today it's good, but what about in fucking five years? Now, you may think that I'm out of my mind, but that's because you haven't lived through what I lived through. I come from Argentina, right? I remember being in Argentina when the dollar to the Argentine peso was fucking three dollars, three pesos to one to one U.S. dollar. Today it's in the eight hundred thousand plus bullshit. Did people think back in the day at two dollars, at three dollars of an Argentine peso to a dollar that things would get debased to basically zero? No. They weren't prepared. They were uneducated. And the last thing you want to be is a fool that thinks that they know everything. Then you're fucked. Then you're fucked. I will, I will gladly say I'm ignorant on every topic for the rest of my life if that means that I get to keep my ability to fucking continue learning. Because once you begin to evaluate how the world's working, you're going to stop scrolling and start making some serious motherfucking plans, bro. Because it's become so obvious where the world is headed and a lot of you guys are gonna get fucked. It's unfortunate, but it's the truth. Unless you make a plan to do three things. One is capitalize on the trends and the markets at hand. I'm not saying buy fucking shit coins. Understand where the world is headed and where attention is going and figure out where you can make money and build around that ecosystem. Two, extremely important. Your company, your income needs to be AI proof, AI proof. Okay, cool. Today you're fine. In 10 years, you're fucked. How many times do I have to say this? Do you have to go back to the Geneva vlog in Switzerland when ChatGPT had just come out and I said, everybody's fucked? Like, do you not understand Moore's law to when you see an indicator, a growth, a technological growth in every area of society except education and money and those things have never changed, right? So education is what the technological transfer of information and what is money but the technological transfer of value and commerce. These two things have now become completely revolutionized. I mean, guys, capital club uh, ecosystems like ours that live on the internet, we make more than some of these fucking universities. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You would be fucking surprised. So there's a new wave towards what? The future of how the world exists. And I refuse, and you should refuse as an intelligent individual to listen to anybody that's talking out of their ass that is uneducated and that has no results. Because even though I'm not the richest guy, I'm not the biggest e-com guy, I'm not the biggest crypto guy, There's one thing that over the last couple years has stood true. I'm almost always fucking right when it comes to trends. Look at the track record. So if I'm mentioning something to you, it's because I've been studying. Let me give you an example. Here, hold up. Can I add photos to this shit? Um, let me see if I can show you guys something. Can I add photos to this? I'm gonna show you guys a photo. Mm -mm -mm. 
Did they did they delete photos? Let me see here. I was gonna, I'll post it I'll, I'll post it after on on Instagram guys so you guys can see it. But it's basically because I've been tracking shipping routes. That's something that I do to understand basically where the world is headed is tracking shipping routes and how the ships are moving. So I've been tracking the shipping routes for this from the Suez Canal. So what I'm telling you guys is things are about to get fucking more expensive. Now it's a lagging indicator. Do you think no more dollars are going to be ever printed? Like, do you understand over the last 10 years, more dollars have been printed than have ever been in existence ever over the last 20 years? That shit's not like bad to you. That's just not weird. So they're, they're keeping you distracted. They got you fighting over dumb shit and they're stealing everything right in front of your fucking face, dude. And I think, I think you need to have a real fucking reality check, dude. Like fuck the fact that there's 8,000 or 6,800 people here, just like you and me, like real, really, 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 really. Bro, don't get fucked. Don't get fucked because you were lazy. Don't get fucked because you chose to not get educated. Don't get fucked because you decided not to pick up that book or go to that event or sit down and listen to that podcast or educate yourself on a specific topic. Guys, AI is extremely new. Crypto is extremely new. In The internet is extremely new. But this shit is about to get censored as fuck. Like... What you need to understand is how we are going into a techno-feudalistic state. That's why Bitcoin, that's why these tools of freedom, I'm working on some freedom tools as well to release um, just open source to the public. I think it's going to be super beneficial for you guys uh, because we kind of have to do our part when this entire shit hits the fan and 90 plus percent of the internet will be run by AI bullshit bots and you won't know what's true and you won't know what's fake. So I think you need to start collecting the things that are real. Like what is real? Relationships, network, fucking Bitcoin, gold. These are like real things, dude, like real things. Go get some fucking real skills. One, two, moving on to the next one. So, so I've been through election cycles and crypto bull runs. You know, like I did the 2020 cycle and that was fucking madness, dude. And it's coming again, dude. It's coming again. 2024 is about to be ruthless. Uh, the psyops are going to be huge. In my opinion, it's going to be a great opportunity to get extremely wealthy. I think over the last two years, we've seen a massive contraction, but I think things are coming back around. I don't know for how long, I don't know how sustainable this is, but at the end of the day, I've said it once and I'll say it again. If the US gets fucked, every place in the world gets fucked. Dude, everything runs on Visa, everything runs on MasterCard, everything runs on Amex, and everything runs on a fuck, fucking couple companies. Those companies go down, AK American companies, the world's fucked. So don't be so much worried about where you currently are, especially if you don't have much, right? Because if you don't have much, you don't have much to lose. So might as well go fucking all in. But do the following thing. Take some time and understand the sense of urgency that you're in and that whether you believe it or not, and I am right, Time will tell. There will come a digital lock upon you and upon me. And unless you have money, and unless you have a way to get out, you're fucked. And that is the truth. Will it be in every place in the world? No. But look what happened in Europe. All you motherfuckers had to get jab digital IDs. Cut. Couldn't do anything about it. Now, what happens when that medical ID is connected to your bank account and to your social media account? You don't think it's coming? 
Okay. Oh, that was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. Whatever happened there with my hand motions that caused that fucking emoji, fireworks, motherfucker. Hold up, I gotta turn on the comment section because this, this shit was fun. Anyways. That shit was dope. You see, it's like, when you're a glitch, when you're a glitch, you're a glitch, bro. When you're a glitch, you're a glitch. You saw it. Anyways. So, guys, um, we need to have some serious conversations. I'm dedicated to, to, to our community. We're one of the top, if not the top community in the world. Uh, by number, by influence, by size. Uh, and my objective is very simple. There's more than enough for all of us. All we have to figure out is how do we band together to not get fucked. And I promise you, there's not a lot of people talking to 7,000 people saying this. You know what I mean? Because the entire game has been, how do you become a greedy little fucking pig and keep everything to yourself? And that's the wrong mindset. Because it's not how these dynasties are working, I can tell you that for fucking sure. Rome wasn't built by one man. We're the next generation. So I'm counting on you guys. You can count on me. I study daily deeply to come prepared as best as I can. I'm still young, I'm still figuring it out. I have another 90 years. But I think it's extremely important for you guys to have a sobriety check as to where the world is headed. Remember, remember, they locked you up for two years. Remember, the people that protested in Canada lost their bank accounts. It's so fucked. It's so fucked. Get ready. So wherever you are in the world, I'm counting on you. We need each other. It doesn't like we need glitches all over the fucking game. I need you guys on your shit. I need you guys getting educated. I need you guys getting strong. I need you guys getting developed. I need you guys networking. I need you guys getting connected. I need you guys to take it seriously, okay? I think I think you guys got to take this shit seriously. You're not you're not a fucking child, dude. You're not, you're not two years old. You're not six years old. Like you're going to have to deal with the consequences of your actions. You're going to have to deal with the consequences of your inaction. You're going to have to deal with the consequences of the people you surround yourself with. You're gonna to have to deal with the consequences of the fucking money that you hold and the currency that you trust. You are fully responsible. And the thing is, if you want to be part of a good network, you have to become valuable. You have to become useful. Because it doesn't matter whether it was World War I or World War II. The ones that had a higher chance of surviving the entire game were the ones that were rich, connected, and motherfucking talented how it's always been. Richest, most connected, and the most talented. If you're neither, get to work. Get to work. That's the BTC talk. Guys, should I should I start doing YouTube again? I've been I've been off the game for a fucking a fucking while. Now by the way, uh, I've decided to close Capital Club before end of the year. So December 31st, it's your last day to join the wait list. I just decided that by the way, I just decided that. So everybody that was able to join Capital Club, congratulations to all the tens of thousands of people, but I'm closing it again after four years. So uh, do as you please. Uh, Capital.club, if you haven't signed up yet, uh, you're not guaranteed to get in, but it's the wait list. But anyways, I'm thinking about getting back in the game with the content things 
uh, let me know. What do you guys think? Should we talk more of, uh, of markets? What do you guys think? And as you guys know, I have my research team. We, I, I, I build my thesis in my portfolios based off of narratives, based off of perspectives and based off of trends. And I have, and I have a, my team of, of researchers and, uh, and it's really powerful, dude. It's really powerful when you have intelligent people working for you that put in the grind and analyze ecosystems and are kind of like more intelligent than me. So I'm going to be bringing forth something on that side because I've been getting a lot of requests. Let me know if that's something that's interesting for you guys. And then on the final note, use this last week of your holidays, guys. Use this last week and into the new year to walk with strength, to walk with focus, and not to use this week, right, to do what everybody else is doing. Enjoy your family, make, make the best of every moment that you have, but understand that when January 1st rolls around, you're on the fucking grind. There's things to accomplish. 2024 can be your year if you choose it to be. The question is, is it gonna be another year? Or are you going to change? Because nothing will change unless you do. Your bank account won't change, your relationships won't change, your mental status, your physique won't change unless you change. And change starts by what? A choice. Make the choice today that 2024, you're gonna make more money. Why? Because you're fucking in charge of your life. So if you say you're gonna do something, you're gonna do it. You're gonna get healthier. Okay, perfect. What type of health? In what areas? And you're gonna get fucking specific. And then you're gonna commit to it and you're gonna accomplish it because that's what life is all about. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the data set. Walk with truth, walk with power. 2024, W in the, w in the chat guys. Oh, and should we, should, we run, should we run up some live streams? Let me know we should run up some live streams. I'm thinking about getting back in the whole live stream game maybe a couple times a week. I'm a little bit busy, but 2024 is about to be amazing about to be super powerful. Somebody said book check. Uh, I can't book check you guys right now because the books that I have are private. I have two books in front of me, but I can't show them to you. Maybe next time. Should we do a, uh, should we do, guys, should we do AMA? Three questions? Three question AMA, let me know. We'll run up a three question AMA. Let me know we should do it. Yeah, okay. Guys, if you, if you didn't take notes, I recommend that you do. Okay, let's see who we got in here. By the way, guys, I highly recommend you get profile photos that don't make you look like a bunch of fucking idiots because then it's kind of hard to network. And unless you're using social media to network and to really grow, I'm not sure why you're using it. All right, here we go. Yo, what's up, brother? Yeah, what's up, G? From Seattle, man. Uh, appreciate all you've been doing, man. Uh, just wondering what's the top three points you would give out to anyone looking to restart their whole life? First, know that you can't restart your whole life. You have to deal with the consequences, the memory, and uh, the decisions of your past. Uh, so you can't restart your life. What you can do is change your life. And to change your life, what you have to do is first decide. And then, simple, what are the top three things that you need to change? Tell me. Are you telling me? me. Yes, you. Uh -huh. Top three, income, family, and friends. No, income uh, Income isn't a thing you need to change. There's something that's causing the income not to be there. What is it? Probably the lifestyle and the work, work I'm doing. Okay, what, what, what are you doing for work? Uh, I'm in the real estate. I'm a real estate agent and also run a marketing agency. You're, 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 in real, you're a real estate agent with 8% interest rates and yep. nobody buying houses. Exactly. Sounds like a great way to get rich. You see, like... Not, not the best. It, it's not. It's shit. 
So uh, I would get out of that because it's absolutely terrible. And yeah, you can make money and I'm not saying you can't, but is it the best opportunity? And is it the best use of your time? I feel like there's way more use of okay. my time. Perfect. So what are you going to do about it? Make a game plan. That's what I got to dial out. Bro, fucking quit. You, you're, oh, you're, you're, you're in a car, which means you clearly have a couple bucks. You're not going to go, you're not going to go broke. But why are you wasting time going into 2024 doing real estate in Seattle? What are you going to sell Bill Gates another house? Probably like, not. okay, so it's rainy. It's nasty. You're in your fucking car. You should be, you should be in Bangkok, Thailand, bro. $1,500, $1,500 a month crib on your laptop, making money online, bro. What the fuck are you doing? No, that's true. That's true. I think the problem for me right now is I'm trying to figure out the next steps. Even the marketing agency is not making the dough I want. Um, bro, and I don't things think don't, don't just make money, bro. You have to create money making machines. Money just doesn't make itself. You need to create money making machines, brother. Oh, you're right. It, it's just, you're, you need to be the money making machine. So the thing is, you are in the wrong department. So you, you're in the wrong business right now. Why? Because one, you're bound to physicality. So you can only do as much as you're physically able to do. Two, you have to expend your time, energy, and attention physically, which means you can't scale. Can't and then scale. finally, and then finally, you're in a business model that's horrible. Do you know how many real estate agents there are? Dude, too many. Way too many. Too many. Every, every fucking corner, man. Yeah, you know why? Because it's just a fucking glorified uh, uh, sales position that you get a, a glorified or five receipt for. But the point is very simple. I think uh, I think I cut I lost you there. But the point is very simple. If your goal is to make money, then why the fuck are you doing a job that doesn't make you money? That's true. No, I, I agree. Man. So what 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 would be how can I evaluate Quit. That's true. Well, you can't, well, you can't sell houses again in three months. You're, you're going to miss the entire Bitcoin halving that's coming in four months. You're just not going to be involved. You're just going to ride around and show houses. Fuck that. You're right. I, brother, well, I have, brother, I have kid, I have fucking six kids in my community that got, that became fucking, I know it sounds crazy, but they became millionaires over the last two months trading the markets. And yeah, it's only six kids, but they're fucking under 18 and they're fucking sad. And I'm like, the fuck? The fucking people out here doing it, they only knew what's happening in the rest of the world. And I'm not saying go out here and trade the markets because kids are fucking degenerates. Uh, but the point is, dude, the vehicle that you picked, it ain't it, dude. Find another vehicle. How, what would you, or how would I evaluate what the next vehicle would be? Like, what's the opera? Brother, I just spent the last fucking hour talking about it. I've been taking notes. Okay. You're right. AI proof and get into the Wi Fi game, dude. You're right. Get into the wi-fi game you know what is fucking incredible the fact that i have slaves i am a slave master i have a thousand little robots running around the internet doing whatever the fuck i want when i tell them to do it and they never question me and they never get tired <laughs> and you're not using them you're out here working you're out here yeah. using your own time i'm instead of slave. learning how to code and talk to robots and ai Okay, so perfect. And anybody can hate on it and they can say whatever they want. But if the internet did not exist, we would go back to the fucking Stone Age. If you cut off the internet and the electricity today, people become useless. So where, why am I not going to build a business and an ecosystem where people literally spend their entire waking fucking day on the internet? So why? Why, what am I going to build a physical store in the, in the mall? <laughs> Holy shit, what an idiot play, dude. Oh, you're just waiting for foot traffic when I can build an e-commerce store and direct traffic at will from all four corners of the entire game? Like, do you understand the mindset needs to change, dude? It does. I'll what do you have to lose? Selling, not nothing. Not making money for two months bro i've gone long 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 periods of, of my life not making money planning 
setting myself up for success and understanding one very basic principle that no farmer ever planted a seed and expected to eat the fruit of that seed on that same day. It takes a long, long time to see the rewards of your labor, but make sure that, that where you're laboring, it's going to pay, it's going to pay you. Make sure that you're getting a hundredfold for your effort. Plant those seeds, dude. And I just haven't seen any better place than building online, dude. It's just, it is where it is today. And most people shitting on me are mentioning things, and I don't have many, few and far between. Most of their business is online anyway, which is the irony. And they're shitting on me online, which is the irony. Everything's online, brother. Get in the fucking game, you hear me? I'll get in the game, 2024, man. I, I pulled over for this because i know you're gonna drop some gems so i'm on the side of the highway right now listening to you man literally but don't be don't be the person that makes me look like a fool by casting pearls to swine act on the information that you're given don't just have mental masturbation towards the fact that it's a good idea do something with it so you can actually live a good life you feel me brother appreciate Fuck. you brother 2024 December what 22nd December 22nd what do you mean five, what are you gonna wait eight days eight days start now all right peace good good man thank you <laughs> good talk good talk all right let's get somebody else in here let's get Christian in here hold up Christian let me get you on here let's see if you have a, a question You guys feel me? You guys feel me? You guys feel me? Fuck the haters, dude. I'm done with the shit. Anytime. Dude, you know what's interesting, bro? What's up, Luke? You know what's interesting, bro? Yeah, yeah. what's up? If Noah would have listened to the motherfucking haters, he would have not yeah. built the ark, and he would have drowned with all the other losers. Yes, bro. Hey, are you are you hear me now? What? Are you hear me now? I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, bro. I just I just thought I I just thought I'm now back to Hungary. You know, I'm with my get got children. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. the room. Yeah, you get the hoodies, bro. Uh, no, I'm not I'm not in Puerto Rico yet, bro. Ah, really? Yeah, nice. I'm not in Puerto Rico yet. I'll be in Puerto Rico soon. Yeah, bro, it's, 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 it's very nice to see that your face has changed a lot, you know? You, I, I saw that you start to focus to the, to the biohacking stuff and to, to think about 100% for the, to the health, you know? It's, I really like this. Yeah, I, I, also, I also want to start. Uh, so, bro. Go for it. So, what, what, do, you, what do you think? I, I heard about from the, from the previous guy that, you know, you suggested... Uh, to him to to move to bangkok why just to, just get out of your fucking ecosystem dude because, oh, yes. di because different places hold different information yeah right? so like we met in bali right yeah so the only reason we met was because two individual units decided to yeah. go to a place where there was value you yeah. need to ask yourself is the place where i currently exist right yeah me to do what to receive as much value as possible so the reason i told him move is because sometimes you have to leave your environment to unlock new information and once you unlock new information you end up being in a situation whereby you make better decisions because let's say like this is the cumulative of all the knowledge in the world like this mm -hmm. how much of the cumulative oh that's <laughs> okay that's that was kind of gay uh, yeah anyways uh, the big, let's say, okay, I'm done. I'm done doing that hand motion. Anyways, I'll do the example later, guys. Let's say there's a hundred percent of knowledge of the information of the world. What do you know? Yeah. Zero, less than 1%. So you, you make decisions based off of the information that you have and you cause problems in your life based off of believing that information. Yeah. So if you have a fucked up life and your ecosystem isn't good, it's most likely something that you've identified or you believe or something that you kind of see. If you want to uh become a more resilient individual more adapted individual you have to go to different ecosystems and gain new information 
Yeah, bro, I, I tell you something for that. So, you know, we, we met in Bali in, uh, in the event. So, and you know, I, I already lived in Bali for two years, you know, and uh, we, we have the biggest real estate developer, developer company there. But I just figured out, I just figured out that I, I, I felt myself, I all, I, every time I just hit my head to the roof, you know? And I, I, just, I just started thinking that why I cannot evolve? How can I change my life to, to go to another level? So I made a decision. I left Bali um, three weeks ago uh, because I understand that if I, I am already in the best in the market in, in uh, Bali, but I cannot earn more money, how can I change my whole ecosystem to, to level up? And I just figured out that I just understand the wall, the wall uh, market, how it's going on. And I just asked myself why I cannot do the same. I have own network. I, I have, I know the all knowledge to build the villas there, to do everything the same. And I asked myself why I not do this. Maybe I am, I am fear. I, 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 I afraid about that. I will lose the game. So this, this is the question what I, what I always asked my, uh, for myself in the previous month. What can I change to, to go to another level? And this was, this was, in my opinion, the right decision. And uh, Why? Uh, because, because I, I think that if, if I already under, understand the game and I already know how much money I can earn from that and, and I am the only one person from Hungary who sell uh, Bali real estate uh, to Hungary. I understand that I open an agency. I just sell the same product, and I will get a higher percentage because in Hungary everybody know my face. That they know that the product is is belong to me, and they trust in me. So this is the reason why why I open our agency and and uh, list the same product. And I also talked with the owner and he suggested me, yes, it's a, it's a good idea because he asked me why you still work in our company because of the leads, because of what, because you can, you can come to the office, you can, you can be in a team. And he asked me that why not just apply to marketing person? Why just not apply to sales person who use your strategy and you do the opposite the same and you will get a higher percentage. And you can make an automatic business like they also did. And you know, in Hungary, it's a it's a market. You have the the Bali market, the Bali real estate market. And I I accept this offer, and this is what I that this is what I do now. And you know, besides that, I I started the clothing business, and I feel myself everything is more more more, more better. Everything is more 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 faster, and I feel that this was the right decision. And I, I feel the already the change. So yeah, what do you think about this? I think two things. One, you need to learn how to communicate your ideas faster. Yeah. 400, 400 people left for 500 people left for you to, to get your idea out. So one, uh, understanding how to communicate your ideas. We totally maxed out this shit. Anyways, it didn't crash. So, okay. So let me go back to uh, the point that was being made. Let me go back to the point that was being made so that you guys can, can understand. So basically, uh, he was saying, you know, I, I, I'm doing well in business. But there's another ecosystem where I can go to where I can make more money, but I didn't want to make initially that leap because of fear. I want to share with you guys something important and, I, and then we're going to do one more question and then we're going to wrap up, uh, which is you need to make bets on yourself. You need to make bets on yourself based off of the information that you have and knowing that you're your best bet. You are your best bet. You are your best bet. And that's going to require confidence. So if you fear endeavoring into something, that's okay because it may be bigger than what you can currently handle and that's fine because you have to challenge yourself. 
but it's also important to understand that it that if you feel unprepared then you need to get prepared you need to get prepared i don't like these emojis bro they're kind of weird can i turn them off but anyways all right let's do um let's do one more question here and come in with the question whoever i'm picking just straight up ask a question i don't want to you got to land the plane a little faster let's do two more amas Let me see here. I think I added somebody. What's up, homie? What's up, man? Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate you um, inspiring all of us to uh, better ourselves. My question How's is- How's your day, brother? How's your day, man? Pretty good. I just uh, went to the mechanic, about to do a cold plunge, and then hit the gym. Good but um, I'm a fitness creator, um, getting back into coaching, um, scaling that business. Um, one problem that I've had in my life, I guess, is the, the problem that you had is that you went to the mechanic. Yeah, that too. No, that's your problem. <laughs> you went to the mechanic and you shouldn't have gone to the mechanic. If you're a digital creator, you should be creating and somebody should have gone to the mechanic for you because you're too talented. Mm -hmm. right? You're mm -hmm. too, in the sense of if you're a content creator, you just wasted the opportunity of potentially getting a million views. No, 100%. That maybe cost you five coaching clients, so you're you you maybe lost out on five grand. Mm -hmm. No, I hundred percent agree. <laughs> I got a list of problems, brother. Like, <laughs> by the way, I was in Miami recently. I was hoping to meet up with you guys or bump into you guys at some point, but uh, um, that was too bad. But um, um, one issue that I've been having is the ability to communicate. Like, mm -hmm. I have a pretty massive network. I'm very um, personable, I'm very charismatic. So when I meet people, um, it's it's just easy flowing. I need my connections and it's kind of like led me to where I am today. But I guess one kind of limiting factor that I believe that I have, but isn't is being worked on is the ability to communicate and share my story. Mm -hmm. So storytelling. So I've, ha I've had a very hard time um, sharing my story and I've been, I've lived like, I'm like 27 now, but I've lived a lot, I've done a lot, I've traveled. Um, done different industries, but to share that to the world, it's been very hard for me. So, why has it been hard for you? Um, I guess. No, 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 not, not I guess. We don't guess. I know that I maybe I care too much about what other people think, mm -hmm. even though I put myself out there already. But I have a, I have an image that I want people to see me as. And what, I feel what like image, what image do you want them to see? Perfection, right? Like I just want to be the ideal of perfection in my head. This is my dog, by the way. What is the ideal perfection? I don't well, define perfection. What is the definition of perfect? I'm not. I don't know. I'm so sorry. So, so then, why are you achieving something that you don't know? Mm -hmm. That's you true. Say you want perfection. Maybe that's not what you want, so let's go back to it. Let's backtrack. Maybe perfection is not what you want. So let's head a little bit back to where you were mentioning the concept of caring about what people have to say. Let's go back on that trail. Hmm. So I've been doing social media for, like, seriously, and I've been making my money off of social media for the last two or three years. So I guess with that, the nature of my work, I'm always portraying or presenting a reality of like whatever, like that reality I want them to see, right? Is it real? Yes or no? In the last six, no, six, no, no, no. yes or no? Yes or no? It's okay. Like it's not a big deal. Yes or no? It's real. Okay. Then no. Do you feel it? Fuck what mm -hmm. people are saying. Do you feel like it's real? I feel it. Like it's real but it's not aligned anymore there you go then it's not real okay it's, it's okay bro like it, you, you know what it's okay mm -hmm. being wrong it's okay fucking up it's mm -hmm. okay losing your way as long as you recognize it because that's the first step but if you if you if you facade it you're doing the exact same thing that you're doing you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. you're it's like Eh, yes, but eh, no, you need to become that guy, bro. 
Mm -hmm. So that means you don't have an insecurity problem. You have an authenticity problem because you know your potential and you want to show nothing below that potential, which you deem perfection. Perfection by definition is completion. So, so what are you trying to complete? Your goal. Mm -hmm. What is your mm -hmm. goal? Brother, when you, you walk in truth, when you walk aligned with purpose, when you are who you say you are, then you put yourself out there because that's who you are. So if you don't know how to speak, speak more. If you don't know how to write, write more. If you don't know how to read, read more. If you don't know how to network, network more. Do more of the things that you're not good at because only a fool laughs at a person that tries. I would never laugh at you for trying. Just like I would never laugh at you for riding a bicycle for the first time and falling off. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, but you're not going to be like, oh, no, I know how to ride a bike. You know? Then you're never going to learn mm -hmm. because nobody's going to see you fall. And I think people are going to be inspired more by your authenticity than by your inspiration because it is the authenticity that resonates with people because people want to see that it's possible. So show them. That's it. Like show them, show them that you're the real deal, bro. That's it. Hundred percent. I'm glowing on this shit. Yeah, we glowing, bro. We doing the wellness hacks. <laughs> they got we us with these know. Instagram filters, bro. For sure. <laughs> Anyways, brother. Yeah, I think uh, I, one thing that's important uh, by a dictionary or uh, by Shakespeare, something that is difficult English, and uh, read and read it out loud. All your okay. books. You should be read. I stand and read out loud, mm -hmm. like I'm giving a presentation. So I read sentences with enunciation. I read them to understand them. If I don't understand a word, I pause and I go research it, and then I'll go through an etymological rabbit trail of understanding the origin of that word in Latin, Greek, and whatever its root sources, so that I can understand the word. Because the goal isn't to become an intelligent to to impress people. The goal is to understand. Is to know the tr truth. That's it. Bro, we're in the pursuit of truth. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck we're doing here. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know anything. I'm merely a mirror for people to reflect themselves on. And hopefully they find some inspiration to find truth and authenticity. That's it. That's all I can do. And to do anything beyond that is to live a life that is based off of pleasing other people. And if it, and you know, I know this, I have across all my platforms, millions and millions of followers. I can't please everybody. So I'm just not going to please anybody. <laughs> That's the Buddha I'm in. That's yeah. it. And that means I need to speak the truth, not my truth, not what I think. It, no, I need to know the truth and knowing the truth takes time and I think going through that journey with your people, going through that journey of exploration is what people want to see. And I think that that's what becomes AI proof. AI cannot self-develop for you. AI cannot go to the gym for you. AI cannot sit here and converse this way and, and impart data sets that, it, that, that aren't devised by equations. You know? So figure out what what is human and what is real and what is authentic. I hate to, uh, I hate to, to, to use as an example, but I saw it today. Uh, Putin was having, uh, uh, Vladimir Putin was having an interview with an augmented reality slash deep fake version of himself. And it was a deep fake version of the, of a student from a university of, of St. Petersburg or something like that. Uh, and he looked and sounded like Putin. And then he, he was like, he asked Putin, how do you feel that I look like you and sound like you? And Putin responded, you can look like me, you can sound like me, but in my mind, I know that you're not me. And it, it's just funny because what you need to become is the type of person that can become irreplaceable. So 
as technology advances and as as things become more inauthentic, I think the authentic things will stand. And I think that that's a goal worth pursuing. So you just have to figure out what does that look like for you and pursue it. 100%. Those are my thoughts. Thank brother. you. By the way, um, one thing I'd love to do to give back to you, um, I'm actually friends with Chris Williamson and he was here in Toronto where I'm from. I was wondering if you would uh, be interested in hopping on a podcast with him. Maybe I could make the connect. For sure. Why not? 100%. Yes, I think that yeah, that'd be great. Awesome, brother. Thank you. Appreciate right it. Here. Let's connect soon. It's been a good talk. Talk soon. Peace. Yo, guys. Shall we do one more? Let me yeah. know. How, how do I leave off of this? How do I know how to do this? Can you boot me off? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There we go. One more, guys. Let's do one more. And we're out of here. Stick around. Let's, let's do one more. Come in with the question. Let's see, I'm looking here. I'm looking for a good profile photo. If you don't have a profile photo at all, it's just not a thing. And you have to have a human profile photo. Let's see here. A lot of requests to join. Give me a second. It's like a couple hundred people. All right, right here. I think I just added somebody. What's up, Luke? What's up, brother? How are you, brother? What's up, brother? Good. Where are you? Sorry, I'm actually in the state building in Delaware. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were in the in the matrix because uh, <laughs> I saw the fluorescent lights and the concrete walls, and I assumed you were either in a prison or in a school, but it looks like you're just in another government building. Yeah, I came to get some some stuff done in the government building in the, in Delaware. I had a question. Um, Talk to me. So, can I see your face real quick? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. This, this is a. This uh, this isn't Snapchat bullshit, you know, where you <laughs> show your ear, you know what I mean? How are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Um, so in the next couple of months, let's say probably starting this, you know, actually, no, in the next two weeks, if I want to put $10,000 into a cryptocurrency or two or three, what would you recommend? I know Bitcoin. We just thought you just talked about Bitcoin. Um, so that's probably, you know, the one. But um, I want to try something new. Okay. Then go try weed. Or heroin, if you want to go. Try no, no, new. <laughs> no. So I did. I mean, I've been. I actually, I just joined Capital Club, so thank you for that. Because Money Talks was insane. I have to rewatch everything, but um, just because there's there's too much to to actually grasp in there. It was just way too much info, um, and I learned more than I've learned anywhere else. That, that was actually insane. Um, so thank you for for creating that. Because I don't. You're even welcome. Know. So let me let me um, go back to your your question. I think I think your question comes from a genuine uh, place. So I'll understand it kind of. But first, I'm going to rephrase it. Okay. Never, never depend on another man to feed you. Um, you sh and you should be embarrassed that you're asking me how to invest. That's it. So, but now I'm gonna, now that you can feel that shame and embarrassment, I'll tell you. So. Uh, uh, there's a couple important things that need to be played, right? I think I think there's a couple ecosystems that people need to be looking at that I think are going to explode. And not right now, because, bro, this isn't a fucking casino. Like, I don't do this casino shit. If you want to go 50-50, just like, because the market goes up and down, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, it's, it's either up or down. If you're going to play that same shit, just go to the casino and put, and put your, your 10 grand on black and just call it a day, right? Yeah, yeah. So if that's what you want to do, perfect. But that's not the game you want to play i'm going to give you guidance as to the three things that you look for in projects worth investing in one is founder pedigree so before you buy a fucking coin or anything do you know anything of the team in the project and their history and their ability to actually push through or to build hype or to campaign or to market their their endeavors who are they connected to all these things so understanding that that you're buying people. Two, narrative. Is what this token or product offering currently in demand in the marketplace? Like, is this something that people want? So for example, if I was to tell you, um, what is something that's completely irrelevant today that was super relevant in crypto? Uh, um, 
okay, Luna, right? Or Luna or FTT token. These projects were supposed to be the next big thing. Now they're basically useless. So you need to be able to not just throw your money at that shit being like, oh, it's going to go up. You need to be able to evaluate your options. And then finally, risk reward ratio. You need to understand that in crypto, your bags can get chopped by fucking 50% overnight. Like you can lose 50% of your money overnight. So what's the risk reward ratio of buying uh, crypto at these prices versus not buying them? And that's a risk reward ratio that you need to evaluate based off of the project and based off of the current market cycle. The additional one that I'll add to it is if you're talking about long-term investing, like you want to play long-term or you want to play swing trades, I would look at other tokens that have the narrative or potentiality of having an ETF. So Bitcoin is having their ETF, which if I was BlackRock, if I was Fidelity, if I was uh, State Street, if I was Vanguard, if I was Valkyrie, if I was any of these companies that were about to uh, either endeavor into a Bitcoin ETF or about to file a Bitcoin ETF, the first thing I would be doing as soon as this project becomes successful, if it becomes successful and a ton of money goes into it, is launch an Ethereum ETF instantly after. Instantly. Why wouldn't I? It's another. It's just a financial product I'm selling to my customers as a vehicle for them to make more money. So I would be looking at what is going to be the next ETF narrative. And I think that if ETH regains its reputation and... Uh, solidifies itself, I think it could be worth $8,000, $9,000, $10,000 a coin. Okay. Thank you. And it's so, right now it's worth $2,300. Yeah, so, yeah, I saw that. So, yeah. so the thing is, I'm not going to give you a 1,000x shit coin that's $50,000 market cap because the moment I, yeah. I do that, there, there's 5,000 people, right? So uh, I'm careful with, with these things. Um, but it's, it's more about narratives, teams, and risk reward ratio based off of where the chart currently stands and where the overall market is. And then finally, now just add the future markets of potential ETFs that are going to be taking place if the Bitcoin ETF, which is a product, right, becomes successful. If this product becomes successful, it's not going to be the first one. So what is next? And you want to be play, playing the what is next. The what is next, what is next, what is what is next. And if you play the what is next, then you have the opportunity to enter with low risk, high reward, get to know the teams better, which is what I do. I, I, and that's, and that's, part, that's something that's coming out uh, for, I'm building this. It's currently in development phase, but I have some good crypto gem hunting shit that is being developed for, for the community. So uh, I'll keep you guys posted on, on that as it, as it develops. But those okay. are my thoughts, brother. Noted. So one more question. Sorry. When are you coming to what's the next capital event? And um, I know capital club event. Sorry. Are you doing one in Delaware? Anywhere near here? Miami, I'm assuming. And are we going to be allowed to go glitch, there? To- glitch meetups all over the world this year. Bigger and okay. better than ever before. So be on the lookout. It's going to be fucking crazy. OK, I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be teaching my M3 model, uh, which is the mental models that I've developed for money management of both self and others and mindset so it's the m3 model it's my my entire mentorship ecosystem so with all the meetups and uh events 2024 they're gonna be fucking sick i'm gonna be sharing these things with people to make sure that they're prepared equipped for the markets to build fucking scalable teams and to develop mindsets that are equipped to winning it's not only about seeing the right opportunity taking action and capitalizing on the right opportunity, but having the right mindset to be able to identify the opportunity. Because if you can't see opportunity, it doesn't mean that opportunity is not there. It just means you don't have the right lens to see it. So how do you develop the right lens? By developing a new worldview. How do you develop a new worldview? By developing a new mindset. How do you develop a new mindset? By understanding and believing and feeding yourself new information. So Now is your time to get extremely educated in whatever endeavors you want to get educated in, and that's how you win. Correct. Yeah, and I actually just ordered the book that you posted on your Telegram. So uh, I think it was two days ago. So we'll see. I I literally pay attention to all the stuff you post. So um, look forward to meeting you in Capital Club soon. Likewise, brother. Thanks for taking time. Talk soon. Cool. See you. Talk soon. All right, guys. That was a...
another live stream. I think this is the first one we've done in a while. It's good to be here. It's good to elevate with you guys. If this was a uh, of value to you, I'm not saving it. So good luck if uh, you're able to keep this recording. Um, and let me know if we should do it more often. I think it's gonna be a good time. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. All the love, all the power. Luke Belmar, out.